All right, hi, and welcome back. Happy Sunday. We are here, Attorney Steve Vondren. We are talking about today the California Consumer Legal Remedies Act and a demand letter. This is a demand letter I posted uh, on Scribd many years ago. You can see this is about six years ago now. So it may not be totally accurate. It may not be current and up to date, but this is just to give you a general overview. This is not legal advice. This is not a legal letter. This is just a sample, something you can see what it might look like, okay? This is what happens. This is one of California's uh, consumer protection laws, okay? And every litigator should know about it. Um, California has this statute. I'm sure other states have their statutes. You have to check your own state. This is a state consumer protection law. And I don't do a lot of consumer protection work, but I used to do some back in the good old days. And this was actually a personal problem that I had with a company. As I recall, I think they took down my website. Uh, the accounts were transferred and somebody new company took over my website and I had some problems with it. So um, I wrote this. Uh, but, but every litigator should know a little something about the California Consumer Legal Remedies Act, CLRA. And if you need the demand letter, here it is. This is something to guide you on. Don't use this. Don't have this be your final thing. But just a general template if you're wondering what they look like, okay? So um, here we are. California Consumer Legal Remedies Act. It's got a list of prohibited items, and I think this is up to about 27 now. This is the consumer protection, probably the main one in California. But what I like about this act is that it allows for attorney fees. It allows, if you're the prevailing plaintiff, it allows for attorney fees. So this can be a really nice um, cause of action to allege when you are a consumer injured by any of the following things that they list. And I only have 15 here, but there's, like I said, there's about 27 now or so. So here's some of the things that are prohibited. Let's take a quick look at this. Um, passing off goods or services as those of another. So that's where you're pretending that uh, something, maybe you have a photo and you're trying to sell it and it's not really yours and you're passing it off as, some, as somebody else's. A consumer that is aggrieved by that can file a lawsuit, okay? Um, claiming false geographical origins, for example, saying something is made in, let's say, San Francisco, when in fact it's made in Stockton, okay? So things like that. False geographical or originations, okay? Uh, number three, representing that goods are original or new when they are not. Now, I know they had a lot of problems with car dealers, um, saying, well, this is a brand new car here. And it turns out that it was a rental for, for eight months or whatever. So um, there are lots of problems where things are original or new, represented to be that, but they are not. Okay. Uh, four, representing that goods or services are of a particular standard quality or grade, or that goods are of a particular style or model if they are of another. So just misrepresenting the nature of, um, or grade of a product, okay? So that sort of misrepresentation is going to get you. Uh, so now what do we have here? This one I found to be interesting, okay? Now this one, and I've actually tried to find some information on this. It found it rather difficult to find information, but, you know, it's out there somewhere. But anyway, disparaging the goods, services, or business of another by false or misleading representations of fact. So this is a consumer protection law, so I'm not quite how, sure how that works. But it's here if you have a defamation or libel case and you're a consumer, I'm not sure how exactly sure how that would arise. This is something to look at, okay? Number six, here's your here's your bait and switch right here. Advertising goods or services with intent not to sell them as advertised. So you say, come on in. The car is fully loaded. You know, $15,000, it's fully loaded. Everything you could totally want. And you get in there and you're rolling down the windows with your hands. Your, it's manual. So you're like, what? This isn't exactly fully loaded here. So that kind of thing. Seven, advertising goods or services without a reasonable quantity, unless you're disclosing a limited quantity. So saying, oh, you know, we've got tons of cars come down here. We've got everything. And, you know, we've got every big sale today. And then you get down there and there's one car. 
So <laughs> it's those kinds of things. Okay. So I'm not to, not to pick on car dealers, but I know that was part of the reason in passing this law was to have something, you know, for like the lemon law, something where you know things, you know, things just aren't working as they're advertised. Okay. So. Um, number eight, I found this one interesting. Okay. And this is where you order something or advertising furniture without clearly indicating that it is unassembled. If that is the case. So advertising furniture, that's the, the consumer has to go home and assemble. Uh, I guess they have to post that clearly and make sure that you know that you have to assemble it yourself. So that's number eight, uh, nine advertising. I thought we just had that here. <laughs> I'm going to skip that one. Number 10, making false or misleading statements concerning reasons for price reductions. 11, representing that a part replacement or repair service is needed when it is not. This is your car repairman. You take it in, they go, oh, oh boy, you need a new muffler, powertrain, you need a new radiator, you need everything when such is not true. Okay, that's just good old, good old fashioned fraud right there. Okay, so that's 11, 12, representing that the subject of a transaction has been supplied in accordance with a previous representation that it has not, when it has not. 13, representing the consumer will receive a rebate, a discount, or other economic benefit if the earning of the benefit is contingent on an event to occur subsequent to the consummation of the transaction. So this is where they say, you buy now, oh, you got a, there's a $500 rebate, and then you find out, oh, there's other things I have to do to get that rebate, you know, so that's sort of misleading, deceptive business practices, okay? Um, what's this one? 14, this is robocalling, disseminating an unsolicited, pre-recorded message without consent, okay? Uh, 15, and, and that's, you know, there's example, there's exceptions if you're, if you're a, de- a debtor, so you owe somebody a debt, then they can robocall you. Or if you have a prior relationship, uh, there are circumstances where they can call you and robocall you. Everybody hates robocalls. I hate them. Um, and lots of lawsuits are, are generated off robocalls. Companies don't know. New companies get in and they go, hey, we got the technology of this robocall. They never look up this part of the statute. They could be subject to liability. Okay. What else we have here? Number 15, misrepresenting the authority of a salesperson, representative, or agent to negotiate the final terms of transaction with a consumer. There's another uh, one that I like. It's inserting any unconscionable. I don't have it in here because this is an older one, but this inserting any unconscionable clause in a contract. So this may be your arbitration clause where they're inserting in an unconscionable arbitration clause. So that's another thing you want to look at. What else do we have? Uh, Senior citizens are also protected. We've helped a lot of clients with elder abuse claims dealing with car dealerships. But this one is a little bit different. This is soliciting a senior citizen for home improvements that require a loan, which encumbers a senior's primary residence. So say you're selling, and this isn't on my list, but say you're selling solar panels and you call some, uh, you call them at dinner time, right? That's when the calls always come. They call you at dinner time and they say, hey, we've got solar panels. It's going to be a great home improvement for you. All I need is to put a sign here and I put a lien on your property and everything will be fine. So that sort of thing, um, which encumbers the senior's primary residence, this does not include investment property, things like that, um, can be triggered. So you have this big, long list of, like I said, about 24, I think it may be up to 27 now, but check it out. If you're a consumer in a transaction and you have a problem, this is one statute that I want to be looking at because there is a way to turn this into attorney fees and also potentially punitive damages, okay? So, so this is a great tool for your toolbox. As you can see here, I love this. Um, we're trying to stop in, in the parallel. One of the parallel statutes in California is the BMP 17200, Business and Professions Code, which prohibits fraudulent, illegal, and even unfair business practices, even something that hasn't been totally defined. As the court says, there is no single definition for the phrase unfair business practices. It is an evolving concept reflecting the ingenuity of unscrupulous business persons in concocting new schemes to gain advantage at someone else's expense. So this is, you know, so oftentimes these may be asserted hand in hand, um, asserting both of these causes of action a complaint, but but the 17200, 
does not have your attorney fee clause. That's why I like this. If you can fit it into one of the one of these classes of the 24 or so um, items that are prohibited, then you can seek your attorney fees. Okay. So as we see down here, and I had, and so I laid that out. I laid out what my problem was. And damages available under the law. You can have actual damages. You can have class actions. You can get an injunction stopping them from doing this practice again. You can get restitution of any money that you provided. You can get your deposits back, things like that. Um, punitive damages. I like this. Now, under California law, this is California Civil Code Section 3294 which says if you have fraudulent, malicious, oppressive conduct, if it really rises to that higher level of conduct, really egregious behavior, um, especially against an elder, I would say, an elder being defined in California law generally as someone over 65 years old, even though 65 is, you know, now as I'm getting older, 65 looks really young. So anyway, but you have a chance for punitive damages, and attorney fees. If you are the prevailing party, you have a right to seek attorney fees. If you're the defendant, the only way you get attorney fees is if you show the plaintiff did not bring the case in good faith. So it's more of a one-sided uh, attorney fee statute and really like that as a, as a consumer protection attorney. Now, I don't know if you know, but a lot of consumer protection lawyers are some of the lower paid um, just statistically. If you look up the, the stats, they're usually lower paid, but this incentivizes um, lawyers to get in and, and represent people knowing that there may be a, a grounds to get attorney fees, okay? But here's the big kicker. Here's the big kicker, which is unique to this statute. You don't see this in a lot of statutes. Um, it's the 30-day opportunity to cure, okay? So this letter, the reason I'm even writing this letter is because the law requires it. So if, in order for me to even assert a cause of action and have a chance to get damages and to get attorney fees, I have to give them an opportunity to cure. You have 30 days to cure. So what you want to do is you want to send this letter. As you can see, I'm sending this letter, and it's a certain date. You want to give them to a certain time to respond. And if they don't respond, okay, well, now you're good. If they don't respond in a reasonable manner, now you're probably good. If they, you know, if they respond and they provide a reasonable alternative, you, know, you might want to take a good hard look at it because you don't want to go to court with a claim when the judge says, well, they were willing to do something very reasonable for you. In that event, you may not get your attorney fees. They may say you're not a prevailing party. So you got to give them the opportunity to cure. This is what I've done here. I've also asked for documents. Obviously, this is not going to apply in your case or anything. So, But I ask for documents. I tell them what I want. I tell them what the issue is. And then I tell them if they don't take notice, we'll file a lawsuit. Okay, and so this was a case that, um, you know, that puts them on notice. They have a chance to cure it. So you may have, may have a chance to get this cured. So at any rate, that is a quick overview. Do I have anything else here for you? Let me take a look. I think that's going to hit most of it. Just remember, there are enhanced damages for senior citizens can get up to another $5,000 enhanced damages. So, like I said, a lot of times you will assert these with a financial elder abuse claim in California. And the financial elder abuse claim is a statute also that I really like. It has attorney fees and, you know, it protects um, seniors from any bad faith conduct um, committed by another person. Okay, so that's really good. So don't forget your notice requirement. Um, some defenses, possible defenses here. If you're on the receiving end, your business on the receiving end of these, you can also always make a reasonable accommodation. That may be a defense. You can say also that this was not intentional. This was just a bona fide error. Okay, we don't love that defense, but it's in there. And so if they can establish that it's a bona fide error, you may have nothing. Um, so those are some of the some of the main things to look at. Um, you can also throw a demand to preserve evidence in there if you want. Um, but that's about it. There's other statutes in California, but this is one. Every litigator should have this in their toolbox, the litigation toolbox. 
So Attorney Steve here. That's about it. General information only, not legal advice. You can take a look at my letter right here. Okay, I'm going to put it in the, in the video below if you want to click on it, make it nice and easy for you. But that's about it. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel. There's a little bell you can hit so you can get the updates when they come. But subscribe to our channel so you can get some legal news, things that you can actually use. You got to get tired of politics, same old back and forth. Ah, this is legal general information that you can use, something you can tell other people you know about. Okay, so that's it. If you need some help in civil litigation case, entertainment law, intellectual property, real estate, that sort of thing, fraud or fraud in California, financial elder abuse, those kinds of things, give us a ring. You know where to find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com, the first name in legal services. I got to run. I have some more videos coming. Hang in there. We're having a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon.